Hello, I'm Larry Wilson, and welcome to this segment in our study on the five essential Bible doctrines. We have examined salvation by faith. We've examined the state of man and death. And of course, these studies are just short little clips designed to encourage you and to help you to investigate God's Word more thoroughly and more completely than perhaps you have before. I'm here in Round Rock, Texas, and Letty Kincaid has graciously consented to participate in this discussion. And Letty, welcome to the broadcast. Glad to have you here. Thank you, Larry. In this segment, we want to talk about an essential Bible doctrine that most people have never heard about. And in fact, when they often hear about it, they, they can't see that it is even important at all. What doctrine do you suppose that could be? The temple services doctrine, <laughs> yes. The you sanctuary know, service. I say that, Larry, because I had the same um, thoughts. How can this be important? It's from the Old Testament. But I found that it was so neat to investigate because I discovered something that actually shocked me. What was that? That is that God does not forgive sin. He forgives sinners. Big difference. There is a big difference. God does not have an eraser where he erases our sins. Of course, we studied earlier that the books of deeds mm -hmm. are for the recording of our sins, so there's no way that our sins, when, when Jesus forgives us, that they're just erased and forgotten and we move along. Many people believe that salvation operates on the big eraser theory. Yes. That, you know, God keeps a record of of things we do and when we pray for and ask for forgiveness that he takes out the giant eraser and he just removes the bad words and the ugly things we said yes. you know and the yes. things we did he just erases them and we're good to go yes. well if that had been the case Letty why would Jesus need to have died that's right that's right and as a new Christian, mm -hmm. I didn't think that that was worth investigating because it seems so big. But Larry, understanding what happens at the temple service really shows God's wonderful righteousness and His mercy on sinners. King David wrote in the Psalms, the ways of God are in His temple. Yes, yes. And if you want to understand God's government, yes. if you want to understand His righteousness and His love, You've got to go to his temple. That's right. Because you see, in God's temple, it's actually two buildings in one. It's a church and it's a courthouse. Yeah. God has the ultimate church state. God is Lord of Lords <clears throat> and he's King of Kings. He has a government and he has a worship uh, regimen as well. And all of this is designed not for his benefit, but for hours. Yes. Sooner or later, every Christian who investigates the Bible with a great deal of enthusiasm runs into the, the fact that there is a temple in heaven. Years ago, when I was studying Revelation, just beginning to study, I discovered that there's an altar of incense in heaven, there's the Ark of the Covenant in heaven. There's the altar of burnt offering in heaven. There's the seven candlesticks in heaven. I found all the furniture of the old tabernacle in heaven, and I wondered, what's this all about? Most Christians today believe that the Old Testament has really been done away with, and all the things written there were way back then under the Old Covenant and are no longer important. But that is not the case. I'd like to go to the computer and have you look at this text, Letty, and our viewers can see it too. I want you to see that Paul makes a profound statement. Hebrews 8, verse 5, Paul says, They, that is the priests, they serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. In other words, the sanctuary on earth is a shadow 
of a reality that is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned. I like that word. Mm -hmm. Warning. <laughs> warning. When you're about to build this tabernacle, God told him, see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. You know why God was so insistent? Because the sanctuary, the tabernacle on earth is a copy of the one in heaven. And if Moses messed up the model built on earth, our investigation and our study of God's ways would be all messed up. Yes. Yes. Now, there's another text I want to read to you here in Hebrews 8.1. Let's go back to the computer and look at this verse. Paul says, the point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest, speaking of Jesus, who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle, set up by the Lord, not by man. Letty, these verses have profound consequences in a systematic study of Scripture. Because if you understand and begin to investigate the sanctuary doctrines, we can test every conclusion that we come to about the will of God in the sanctuary process, yeah. in the services and regulations established long ago. Because the, the earthly tabernacle is a parallel of the heavenly. And I use the 